Hey guys, welcome back to the Project Nourish podcast. I am fully aware that I sound like I'm in a hallway right now, so I do apologize about the echo in my microphone, but I can't do anything about it right now, <laughs> so <laughs> bear with me. But um, Casey and I are so excited to have you guys back listening to the show. So I, of course, am Megan Gump. I'm a certified functional medicine practitioner, as well as a functional nutritional therapy practitioner and a licensed restart instructor. And I'm Casey Poe Campbell, a licensed esthetician and functional nutritional therapy practitioner. Man, it's so weird saying the functional <laughs> part of it. I'm still not used to it. This is something new that the uh, NTA added for us, but I feel like it makes us sound a little more legit. I don't know why, but uh, so anyways, you can work one-on-one -on -one with either one of us. You can check me out on my website, caseypoe.com. I have a consultation form over there that has changed up a little bit, and it is going to help you get photo shoot ready now. So you're going to just fill out this form and submit it, and I will send you back some quick tips and tricks to make sure you are looking and feeling your best for your upcoming photo shoot. And funny story that I had it going to the wrong email address <laughs> beforehand. So if you submitted a form before and I didn't respond, that's because I didn't get it. So sorry about that. And then also uh, be sure to check me out on Instagram at The Elegant Adventurer. Oh, and I got a new camera. So there's lots more pretty pictures over there. Her name is Zelda. Zelda is badass. I Thank have you. seen the quality photos that Zelda's been taking and it's pretty amazing. So definitely uh, go check out Casey's Insta. She's got some awesome stuff over there. Really pretty, really pretty uh, sunset and sun, sunrise pictures, actually. It's more yeah. what it is, but yeah. Both, I, but yeah. I, I, I was sunrise, sunrise this morning. I, I dig it. I super Thank dig you. it. Thank you. Well, so you guys can find me over on my website, megangump.com. And if you go to my website, you can book a uh, free 15 minute call with me to learn more about working one on one with me. So as a functional medicine practitioner, I do run labs and I'm actually really excited about our conversation today. So Casey and I are going to be diving a little bit more into mold and all of that good stuff. Um, but I do run very specific comprehensive stool testing and urine testing. So we can actually look into underlying gut infections or gut disorders. We can look into mold toxicity. We can look into chemical toxicities. We can look into all kinds of stuff and really figure out what's at the root cause of your concerns. So go check that out on my website. And then you guys can also follow me on Instagram at megan.gump. Um, I do not have a Zelda, so my quality photos are not as beautiful as Casey's, but I do try to put out some good nuggets of information over there. So go check me out. Yes. Okay. I had one quick question before we get into mold. Liverwurst, d can you taste it? Like, how do you, how do you cook with it? Because I saw it on your Instagram stories and I need to get more organ meats. Yes. So one of my recent recipes, you guys, was a beef stir fry that included liverwurst organ meat in with a grass-fed ground beef. And organ meats are so, so, so important. You know, our ancestors used to kill animals and eat the organ meats. I mean, that was the first thing that they harvested because they were like sacred. Mm -hmm. um, they contain a lot of iron and B vitamins and antioxidants and minerals. And it, it's just so, so, so nutrient dense as well. So now all we're eating is muscle. Like you know, that's what our ancestors used to give to their dogs and to their other animals. And that's the thing they ate last, right? They made jerky and whatnot out of that. So there's a company called U.S. Wellness Meats. I am not sponsored, but they are a great company that makes a really good organ meat combination. So there's like some liver, there's some heart, there's some other stuff in there, and it comes in little medallions. And so what I do is I mix one medallion with a pound or two of grass-fed ground beef. So mm. you really can't taste it. You know, in my stir fries, I do add a lot of like seasoning and yeah, salt and Chinese five spice and coconut meals and all that kind of stuff. So it, it hides it. But, you know, if I were to do like one pound of meat versus two pounds, I might be able to taste it a little bit more. And sometimes you get those bites where it's like, yes, it's just a little bit more richer, but it's really not bad. You really can't taste it. And so that's how I hide it is I hide it in with other meats. 
Okay. Good yeah. to know. Thank you yeah. for that. You are so welcome. And it is so good. They have a couple options on there. So they have one that's like just liver and then they have one that's like an organ combination, but they do put other spices and stuff in there to already kind of give it some, some good flavor, but yeah, it's great. Check it out guys. Okay. Good to know. Love All it. right. I'm super excited to talk about mold. We've been wanting to do this for a while now. And Megan is definitely the more moldy expert, <laughs> I guess you would say, <laughs> just from kind of like personal experience or not like from personal experience. And then I feel like you've just done like a total deep dive into it to make it totally your jam. So I will be asking Megan questions. That way she can uh, share all of her moldy knowledge with us. Yep. Yeah. And just super quick rundown, you guys. So, um, most of you know that I do work part-time for Evan Brand, who's another functional medicine practitioner in the industry. And Evan started dealing with health concerns of his old and then long story short, ended up finding mold. So just kind of out of curiosity, I was like, man, I've had a lot of cognitive brain fog, like lack of energy. I've had weight gain since I moved into this house that I moved into when I moved to Houston. And I always felt like it was this house. I was like, there's something with this house. Like the house is like dark, you know, there's this gloomy, eerie feeling around it. And so long story short, we tested our house using uh, the mold plates that I'm going to talk about. And boom, what do you know? Our levels were way higher than they should be for, you know, a normal human exposure that's not considered toxic or a concern. So we've just been on this journey, you know, detoxifying mold in our home and also in my own organs because I did a urine test, which we'll talk about. And uh, I had some higher than normal levels. So I've been feeling a lot better. But, you know, today, Casey and I just want to give you guys more information about what to look out for and what the heck it can do to your body. Yeah. And you know, what's super crazy is, you know, like once you started talking about this, I guess it became much more on my radar, but just some fun facts for you guys. 80 million people in the United States are affected by mold. It's estimated that 50% of buildings in America have water damage or mold and 22% of the population, which is 40 million people have the genes that make them susceptible to illness. Is that around mold? Like mold toxicity? Yep. Or yeah. Just, so, okay. yeah. So specifically HLA, your HLA gene, specifically HLA DR. So if you are a person with those genetic SNPs, you're going to be more susceptible to mold illness or mold toxicity versus let's say your husband or your kids or whoever might be that doesn't have those genetic SNPs. So a big, big common thing that we see in, you know, mold illness is one person in the house gets really sick, right? They're kind of the canary in the coal mines and they have unexplainable symptoms. You know, they've gone through doctors, through doctors and doing all of these different things and taking all these tests. And, you know, at the end of the day, they've spent all this money and they can't figure out what the heck is going on. And so finally they come to us and we're like, oh, okay, yeah. I mean, we need to test you for mold because that's what it sounds like. And then boom, sure enough, you know, they've got a mold issue in the home or maybe it's at their work or it's at, you know, the library or school that they teach or whatever it might be. And that person, that individual gets really, really sick because they might have these genetic SNPs or there's a lot of other variables that can make you more susceptible, you know, compared to the next person. So that's one thing that's super unfortunate is, you know, this really tears up relationships is the wife or significant other, or whoever it might be is like, I am so sick and they can't figure out what's wrong with this person. And so it, it can be pretty devastating in a lot of uh, families and relationships. Wow. I had, and I had never even heard of that. So just super crazy, but you guys, I mean, it's just insane to me how much mold there is out there because I just thought, you know, and especially living in Colorado, I was like, oh, it's so dry here. I don't have to be concerned about it at all. Yep. And I did the same mold test and luckily we were, we were okay. Yeah. You guys were house, clean. Uh, yeah. And I guess the way that I like to describe it is, I mean, you've got to keep in mind, okay, so what is mold? Well, mold is basically just a fungus, right? And so it can be found in essentially any environment, any season, anywhere where there's food and water 
there can be mold. Okay. So you've got to keep in mind, what are our houses made out of, you know, well, drywall and wood and all of these other materials that, well, mold would love to thrive and grow on if there is a water source, right? So if you live in a place that has a higher humidity, like for example, I'm in Houston, we're definitely over 50% most of the year, then boom, there's a, you know, a, a water source for it, right? And so this is really where mold can start to grow on those different uh, materials. And it'll basically send out spores in your home to go, you know, colonize and grow somewhere else. But unfortunately, you start breathing that stuff in along with the mycotoxins or the mold toxins that the mold sends out with those spores. And that's what makes people really, really, really sick. So. Got it. Now, are all molds bad or is there good mold as well? Yeah. So good point. You know, today we're definitely talking about bad molds. But you've got to keep in mind that there are good molds out there, right? So citrinin is used to produce cheese, sake, and miso, right? And that's just a specific mold toxin. Uh, penicillin, or penicillium, the fungi, makes penicillin the antibiotic, right? That saves people's lives sometimes. So there can be good things that come out of mold, but there's a lot of bad things that come with that as well, just in terms of, you know, causing detrimental health issues in human and animals. Do you like blue cheese? I really don't. I'll be honest with you. I really don't like blue cheese. There are a couple instances where I've had blue cheese, like on a burger, like for example, we've got this place called Fildings here and they make like this burger with blue cheese on it. And for whatever reason, their blue cheese is pretty mild. So I can dig that. But other than that, not really. It makes me want to cut my tongue out. Yeah, that's pretty bad. <laughs> Sorry to all those lovers out there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, you guys, so one thing that I want to want to say, so we all think about mold and we all kind of wonder like what makes us sick, right? So mycotoxins, again, the, the toxins that mold releases, that's really what we breathe in and that's what makes us sick. Now, another thing too is a lot of people have heard about like VOCs, right? That's why you got like non-VOC paint. Well, um, those microbial volatile organic compounds. So mold can also release those if they've got enough uh, like food and moisture for that secondary metabolite production, right? And then NVOCs specifically are actually what give like basements um, or like a moldy room or something like that. They're very distinct musky odor. So when you walk into your room, you're like, oh, it smells moldy or it smells musky. Those are NVOCs, which actually can be really harmful as well. So that's what you're breathing in. So get the heck out of there. Yeah basically. Yep. All right. So what are some of our sources of exposure for mold? Yeah. So sources of exposure, you guys, anywhere pretty much where you go, you can get exposed to mold. Okay. So think about like your home, work, car, uh, school that your kids are in or that you work in. Um, grocery store and office, right? If you go to your chiropractor once a week, or if you get acupuncture done, or you go to your dentist, whatever it might be, those can all be sources. Water damaged buildings, of course, are a big source of mold because they've had that water damage and they pretty much have what Dr. Shoemaker likes to call a biochemical stew in there. So there's a lot of fungus, there's a lot of bacteria, there's a lot of those VICs, endotoxins, there's a lot of crap in the air that you're breathing in. Um, But also too, beyond that, sometimes people think about food sources of mold, right? So coffee is a big one, right? That's why buying organic coffee is so important because coffee tends to be more moldy. The other thing is a lot, you know, wheat, barley, corn, and peanuts also tend to be really moldy. So when farmers are growing those and they are, you know, harvesting and packaging them up and then they're also storing them, a lot of those grains tend to become super moldy and they actually can't even sell them for human consumption. So what do they do? They sell them to farmers to feed cattle and pigs and, you know, their livestock. And then they eat that stuff and then boom, who turns around and eat them? We do. So that's also another source of exposure that you have to think about. And that's also why buying organic, you know, grass-fed, pasture-raised meats are so, so, so important. So you don't get that possible contaminant exposure. Mm -hmm. Now, is it going to be the same, you know, like when we're talking about, uh, 
like other toxins where, you know, let's say a fish has some mercury and then we eat that fish, it's going to be kind of worse or amplified in us because we ate it from the fish. Does that make sense? Am I asking it right? Is it like the same for mold? Yeah. Yeah. It makes sense. And it's the same for mold. So, I mean, you know, if an animal eats a moldy crop, then we're essentially eating the moldy crop as well. Mm -hmm. Got it. Yeah. And, um, and that's the thing is, you know, your mold exposure from all these sources, think about kind of the modalities of how we get this stuff in our system. Well, breathing, right? So especially through the mouth and through the nose, okay? Um, also the skin. So think about like, uh, you know, maybe a house or a water jam is building that you guys don't know has a mold problem, but there's chairs or couches or furniture or whatever it is that you're sitting on, that kind of stuff. You can get that stuff absorbed through your skin. And then of course, another big uh, place where we get exposure is through the gut, right? So specifically through the foods we eat. So that's again, going to be those contaminated animals, or it's going to be, you know, moldy coffee or moldy beans or moldy peanuts, whatever it might be. Got it. So pretty much everywhere. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, if if you're through every orifice. Yeah, if you're breathing air that has uh, mold, spores, mycotoxins, fungus, yeast, you're breathing that stuff in. So, you know, hopefully your immune system can knock it out. Hopefully you've got enough hydrochloric acid where you can kill that stuff on contact. But a lot of people nowadays are immunocompromised and they're eating super crappy diets. So they're eating a diet that's got a lot of sugar in there that's going to actually promote the growth of that stuff. Mm Mm-hmm. Once again, do our sugar detox classes. Yeah. (laughs) Okay. Now there are a bunch of signs and symptoms, but kind of in, I guess, in your experience with working with clients, what are some that, you know, somebody comes to you and they're like, I have this, this, and this, and you think you, it makes you automatically think, Ooh, maybe that's mold toxicity. So the major ones are going to be a lot of cognitive issues. So it's going to be when people are like, you know, I can't recall words. Um, I'm having focus concentration issues. I'm having memory issues. Um, I'm having, you know, uh, lack of uh, motivation. You know, I don't want to do anything. Um, Neurological impairment, right? I mean, that's really what I think about as primary as what's going to be affected first. I mean, cause that's really what did it for me. It was a lot of cognitive stuff. You know, I would be sitting here talking to clients and I couldn't remember simple words like arthritis or blood sugar dysregulation or whatever it was. I couldn't find the words to describe what I was talking about. And it's simple words that is in my education and in my common vocabulary, you know, a lot of the other things are going to be like fatigue, muscle weakness, uh, cramps, aches, you know, Um, unusual pain, ice pick pain. So that kind of stuff, joint pain around the body, but it can also be, you know, headaches, um, shortness of breath, lots of sinus problems, right? So when people are tearing, coughing, um, coughing, nasal congestion, runny nose, dry eyes, itchy eyes, a lot of that's going to be from right the way that you're breathing that stuff in, uh, respiratory issues. Okay. Um, Again, another place where we absorb that stuff is through our gut, through what we're inhaling and what we're eating. So diarrhea, abdominal pain, um, other gut issues can for sure be a part of the problem as well. And um, also a lot of like mood swings, right? Like people are happy and then one second they are like super depressed and they're crying and they're thinking about like suicidal thoughts because I mean, unfortunately, that's definitely what mold does is it really kind of puts our brain in a dark place. You know, our thoughts in a really dark place, unfortunately. Um, Temperature dysregulation. You know, a lot of people will say they got super cold hands or feet or they're having issues with their body temperature. And that's going to be a lot of um, nitric oxide issues because mold will, uh, prevent nitric oxide production. So then you've got a lot of circulatory other issues going on. Um, Immune system dysfunction. So anything that has to do with the immune system, because mycotoxins specifically attack the immune system. So certain mycotoxins will attack, you know, your liver, your lungs, your kidney, your brain, your gut, whatever it is, but all of them attack the immune system. And so anything that has to do with a weakened immune system, you know, bingo, that can also be a big red flag. 
Uh, excessive thirst, increased urination, those are also going to be some signs. And, you know, for everyone, it's a little bit different all across the board, right? For some people, it'll be all of these symptoms, you know, they're having concerns about. For other people, it might be mood swings and cognitive issues. You know, for other people, it's temper dysregulation and excessive thirst or increased urination. Um, for other people, it's this metallic taste that they get in their mouth, or, you know, some people might get numbness or tingling or vertigo. So it can really manifest in everyone a little bit differently, just depending on, you know, kind of already what's going on in their body and how they're going to portray those symptoms. Very, very interesting. Yeah. So, I mean, it's one of those things where some of those symptoms you listed, you wouldn't necessarily associate with mold toxicity. I mean, you know, it's like the cognitive issues, especially like I wouldn't associate that at right. first, but you know, kind of like maybe sneezing and respiratory, like those things. So I think this is so valuable just so people can think like, oh, wait a minute, when I'm at my office, you know, I can't really think of certain words or yeah. that kind of thing. And that also brings up a really good point too. So when a lot of people who are mold toxic and they have these certain areas of exposure, so if it's, you know, their home or their car or their work, whatever it might be, they notice that they feel a lot better when they leave those environments. Mm -hmm. So like a lot of people will say, you know, when I get up for work, I feel pretty crappy. I don't have any energy. Um, I got foggy head. And when I get ready and I get in my car and I leave and I go to the office, you know, I'm starting to feel a little bit better. Like I've got some better energy. I feel a little bit better. And then as soon as I go home, it's, you know, right back to getting sluggish, feeling crappy, maybe get a headache, whatever it might be. Mm -hmm. And so that's also a big red flag, like what's going on in your house. And mm -hmm. it can be vice versa for anything. If you feel pretty good at home, but then you go to your office and you feel pretty crappy, you know, what's going on in your office. Um, a lot of people also, some of their exposure is their car, right? If it's ever mm -hmm. had any flooding or you accidentally left your window down when it was raining or sprinkling, I mean, that can definitely be a, a source. So it's also really kind of starting to track your patterns and where you feel good and where you don't, which can also help us narrow down where these exposures are coming from. Got it. Yeah, now especially is kind of a good time to pay attention to that since most people are just working from home Yeah, for the time being. Yeah, now more than ever, definitely. Mm -hmm. um, so what would be some of the other factors that might impact exposure? So, yes, um, you'll see people that, you know, obviously like elderly people that already have an immune compromised system, right? Like that's going to take a, a bigger hit on their system. If you've got a lot of different vitamin and mineral deficiencies, that can definitely contribute, um, especially if you have low antioxidants. So especially something like glutathione, you know, glutathione is a super potent antioxidant that actually helps your body detoxify mold, but also other uh, toxins and chemicals that you come in contact with, you know, day to day. So those deficiencies can also play a really big role. Genetics, like what we mentioned earlier, so HLA-DR, but also other genetics, you know, if you've got MTHFR, so you already don't detoxify as well as someone without the MTHFR SNPs, that can definitely play a role. If you've got underlying uh, gut infections or microbial disease, right? So those can also influence the way that those mycotoxins or biotoxins wreak havoc on your body. Malnutrition, again, this kind of goes back to people's diet and what they're eating. If you're eating a standard American diet where you've got a lot of sugar, a lot of refined carbs, a lot of processed packaged foods, man, that's just going to be sugar for any fungus that you breathe in, right? So if you're eating a clean diet, your body is going to obviously be a little bit more uh, resistant to those infections, especially to want to hang out and start colonizing. Other diseases and conditions, you know, autoimmune, there's some compromised GI stuff going on anyways. Uh, autoimmune always starts in the gut. Um, other diseases or conditions, again, you've got a weakened immune system. So that could also be a, a factor that impacts uh, if you drink a lot of alcohol, if you abuse drugs, um, if you have a low uh, calorie intake, you just don't eat a whole lot. So your body is not fueled and nourished the way that it needs to be. That can definitely contribute. Other toxicities. So if you already have heavy metals, chemical toxicities, Lyme disease, right? If your system is already dealing with all this stuff and then gets hit with mold, 
mold is typically the thing that, you know, the straw that breaks the camel's back and just takes people out. So it's um, trying to keep all of those other toxicities pretty minimal, you know, really working on good detox um, practices day to day. And then also too, if you're on pharmaceutical drugs or you don't eat organic, so you are eating conventionally sprayed uh, fruits and vegetables and you've got a lot of glyphosate in your system, that can also actually create like a super mold. <laughs> uh, we oh, can really? talk about, Yeah, we can, I can uh, talk a little bit more about that, but people who have a lot of glyphosate in their system, that can be a problem. Is it essentially like fertilizer for the uh, fungus? Well, so what's happening is, you know, all across the world, we, especially here in the United States, unfortunately, um, we're actually starting to use glyphosate on a lot of our uh, farmland, right? Unless you're an organic farm, you know that these farmers are using glyphosate and Roundup to spray their crops with. And so what's happening is the fungi on the soil are actually becoming more resistant and they're releasing more mycotoxins as they become more aggressive to the chemical, right? So it's kind of, you know, changing these mold and fungi species to becoming like, you know, Hulk versions because they're constantly getting sprayed with these chemicals and they have to basically evolve to be able to mutate and survive in those chemical environments. And so that's also causing a big issue with, you know, us. And then mm -hmm. they're becoming more aggressive. They've got more mycotoxins. They've got more chemicals that they're releasing that are harming us to more amped levels, right? So it's pretty interesting. Yeah, definitely. Well, I know we only have about 10 more minutes. So let's get into some of the testing that we can do for mold, because I think that we have probably definitely, you know, like sparked people's interest or they're probably all thinking like, oh my gosh, I have uh, mold toxicity. So how would you go about getting tested for this? Yeah. So yeah, we've talked about, you know, where you can get exposed to this stuff, your signs and your symptoms. Um, and obviously with the signs and the symptoms, you guys know that this can pretty much affect you know, any organ, any cell in your body across the board, right? So again, if you're like, oh, well, you know, I have gut issues or I've got musculoskeletal issues or I've got skin issues or lung issues or even, you know, uh, endocrine, hormonal imbalances, infertility. I mean, all mold can affect all of these different things, okay? So don't ever rule out mold until you do testing and you do confirm you know, yes, it's a problem that I'm dealing with or no, it's not a problem. Okay. Mm -hmm. And also people, if you are pregnant or you're thinking about becoming pregnant, you know, and you have the possibility that you might think there's mold or that you've been exposed to mold, or you're curious if you've got mycotoxins in your organs, definitely, definitely, definitely get pregnant because mycotoxins, especially the aflatoxin, um, that can have a lot to do, uh, it can have a big, a big risk on pregnancy. Okay. So, um, those mycotoxins may impair fetal growth. They can also increase the risk for, uh, prematurity and pregnancy loss. So mold in pregnancy is not a funny business. It's really something that you want to look into. Um, but now getting into the testing. So yeah, typically, you know, if you think that mold is an issue, you want to do one testing on your home, right? Because you just want to rule in or rule out the fact that mold might be in your home. And if you're not living in a clean environment, then that can be a place that's making you sick. And the other thing is doing a test on yourself personally, right? So testing your internal organs. And so there's a couple of tests that I do. Um, and if you go to my website, again, you can learn a little bit more information about this. But one, so I use a, a, a Great Plains Laboratory. It's got a lot of amazing tests out there. And they have a mycotox uh, urine panel. So that's actually what I do to test my specific clients looking at mycotoxins in their organs. And then um, through your home, so there is a company that I love and uh, we'll actually have uh, JW on the, uh, on the show here soon so you guys can talk to the owner of Immunolytics. But Immunolytics is a company that makes mold testing plates. And so if you go to Immunolytics directly, 
It's I-M-M-U-N-O-L-Y-T-I-C-S. You can actually order mold plates that are like $33 a plate. They're pretty inexpensive. Just set a couple out in your house. You know, put one in your bedroom, put one in your office, put one, you know, kitchen, living room, wherever you think it's, you know, an area of importance, wherever you spend a lot of time is what you want to do. So just get some information on what's going on in your home, what's going on in your car, you know, put one at your desk at work. Um, And then again, you know, you can do those urine tests to look for, for mycotoxins in your, in your body. And then basically once we get that information and we know what exactly we're dealing with, we can create an appropriate protocol to really detoxify the mold um, in you, but also clean up your house with whatever we would need to do. Yeah. And I did the mold plates from Immunolytics per your recommendation. And you guys, it was super easy. I mean, they make it really, really easy and convenient. So it's definitely not something that you should skip on because it's a pain in the butt because it's so not, it's really easy. Yeah. Yeah. And so there's also, you can order the Immunolytics mold testing plates through a company called CitraSafe. And CitraSafe is like a sister company of Immunolytics. But if you go to uh, my website, megangump.com, and if you click on testing, there's actually a link that you can click on to order the mold testing plates. And that would actually give you, I think they do a a 10% discount off your orders if you use my specific link. So if you guys want to go to my website, you can check that out. Sweet. Saving those dollar bills. Yep. Always a good thing. But, um... But yeah, guys, so that's a little bit about mold. You know, if you have questions or if you want to dive deeper into this, again, please go set up a free 15-minute call on my website. And then Casey and I are, of course, going to do some more podcasts here in the future to give you guys some more information on mold and talk to uh, some some specialists in the industry. Awesome. Thank you, Megan, for sharing all of this awesome information. So you guys go check out her website order the testing plates. You need them. Yep. And yeah. Cool. Yeah. Totally lost, well, my, train I, of, totally lost my train of thought there. No, <laughs> I, 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 should hope, retest. I hope that, uh, I hope that, uh, you guys enjoyed this information and ultimately it can just help someone like it's helped me tremendously. So I'm in a much better place than I was a couple of years ago. And um, there's a lot of good information out there, you guys. You know, another thing that you can do, of course, Dave Asprey, he's got the documentary called Moldy, so M-O-L-D-Y. If you're curious and want to learn more about this, just look up Dave Asprey Moldy documentary, and it's free. You can watch it. It's awesome. It really goes into detail about mold and mold toxin and what it does to your brain and to your body, so what we talked about here today. And um, there's a lot of other amazing people out there, you know, talking about mold. Richie Shoemaker, of course, he's a big mold expert in the industry. Neil Nathan, he wrote a wonderful book called Toxic. So if you guys want to check out those sources, those are great too. Awesome. Thank you so much, Megan. And thank you guys for tuning in. Yep. Thanks, guys. Stay healthy out there during the madness of the coronavirus and um, practice some, some, therapeutic social distancing. I hope yes. that you are reading a book or meditating, finishing that home project, doing something that you absolutely love. And uh, we just are right here with you guys, supporting you all the way. No, you're not alone. And uh, make sure you get to the store and buy some fresh vegetables and keep eating clean. Yes. All right, guys. Talk to you later. Bye. <laughs>